Hello. This is going to be a class discussion. And if you get the joke there, you're in the right place. We're going to talk about a class in computer science. So in my class, we've been um, learning about classes and how to build classes and different things like constructors and implied objects and all the different things, attributes, behaviors. We just completed a questionnaire class, which had the students design a rectangle class and make a variety of a variety of um, methods that are associated with it. So what I'd like to do in this video is just kind of talk about this rectangle class, not necessarily answer the direct questions, but talk about things like vocabulary, little subtleties, and highlight some of the key ideas we're developing. I really recommend if you're in my class you watch this whole video because I'm going to kind of hit on those main ideas we've been talking about so far this year. So let's come right to the top and let's go through and, and dissect this just a little bit initially. So the class is called rectangle and it has what we see is as four fields or what we call instance variables. We know these are instance variables since they don't have the they don't whoop, have the modifier static. Okay? What this means is that every rectangle that is created will have left, bottom, width, height. Okay. Really important here, we have encapsulated the fields. I can't stress this enough, it should just be a reflex to encapsulate everything you do. Of course, there'll be times when when maybe you won't encapsulate for various reasons. But as far as as far as we're we're concerned, the default behavior is just to encapsulate everything. Okay. So we see here we have if we scroll down a little bit here we have one constructor. So remember, a constructor is a special method which is only called when the class is instantiated, or sorry, not class, when the object is instantiated. Okay, what that means is this is a method that, that gives specific instructions about how to create that object. Okay, a couple things with constructors we've, we've learned is that when no constructor is written, there is a default one, which sets all numeric fields to zero and sets sorry all numeric fields to zero all booleans to false and all reference types to null okay um, just to make this a little nicer when I send it out to everyone a um, couple other things about constructors is that once we write a single constructor, the default constructor is removed. So what I see here is that I obviously have one constructor here. So if I come, let's just for a second, let's just comment this one constructor. This is going to cause some problems in my client class. Remember a client class is, oops, that's better. A client class is a class that uses um, the specific class we're designing. We'll save this and I come in here to rectangle runner and I see right away I have an error because I'm trying to create two rectangles that have um, that have specific parameters passed through. So again if I delete those now I can create an instance of rectangle in both case, cases. Perfectly fine. So even though if we come in here there is no constructor okay um, I can still come in here and create this. Okay. Now just a point here, you'll see that I have a mistake here in the rectangle classes because I actually use this constructor later on in my own program in this class, so don't mind that here. So really important, no constructor, it means that I can create, it has a default constructor that takes no parameters. The minute I go and write a single constructor, that default constructor disappears. So therefore I need to give it some information Okay, so now I have to use that constructor that's been made. If I wanted to, for example, still have a default constructor, I now have to write it. So there's our default constructor that's now been written. Okay, perfect. 
Um, so a couple things we also want to make sure we got out of the constructors. Constructors can be overloaded. And this means multiple constructors that take different parameters. Okay. So there's a constructor. We take four parameters and we assign left, bottom, width, and height. So we come down here and we see we have a two-string method. Okay. Two-string methods are special methods which override an existing behavior. Okay. We haven't actually studied cla class hierarchies yet, but what we'll soon learn is that all classes inherit versus various attributes and behaviors from superclasses. And right here, there's no superclass actually associated with it, it appears, but actually what's, what's implied here is something called extends object. Every class you create extends object, meaning that it inherits these behaviors from this superclass. So one of the behaviors that it inherits is the behavior of how to actually print out that object. And so here you'll see if I hover over this green arrow, it says overrides the toString from java.lang.object toString. So what the toString method does gives specific instructions on it, how to behave, how to act when the object is put into make this look nice again a system dot out dot print line. Okay, so some object Ooh, obj. Okay, so again, let's take a look. I'm going to comment this out initially. And it's fine. So now let's go back to our. Oh, we have an error here. Where's our error? I have to find I have an error here suddenly. Let's find that error quickly. Oddly enough, the error was that I hadn't actually saved this rectangle, so it was one from before. Okay, so back to what I was saying. I've actually removed the, the two string method. Um, so if I come in here and let's comment out all this stuff. If I do this, system print line. Let's print out object R1 and I run this. What I get is I get this kind of funny piece of information. What this tells us is two things. It tells us that the type of the object and it tells us the memory location of where that object is stored. So it's actually printing out the memory location of that where the object information is stored. The instructions for this to happen are actually being grabbed from the object class, which is a super class of rectangle. So what I can do is I can override that instruction. I can say, listen, when you actually print out this object, I want you to print something special. So we have this two string method. So now if I run in here, it says R1 and what it says is, okay, this is an, a rectangle object. So let's take a look in the rectangle class. Look at that. I have a two string method. So I'm going to return this string right here, and that's what gets printed out. Okay, so this is a special method. Um, we want to be familiar with it. It's good to note that we can we can actually access it just like that as well. So it works the same way in both cases. All right, let's comment these out. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of the instance methods I've written. So instance methods, so let's just write a little thing here. Instance methods, these are methods that require an implied object. Okay, what it means is that I have to call it, I invoke the method using a specific instance of the class. So for example, if I, I need to have a rectangle object to call area, so I go r1.area. That's how I would call the area. Okay. So 
we can tell that a method is an instance method because it does not have the word static in the header. So we can see area is an instance method. It returns the width times the height or the area. Come down here, we can see that perimeter is an instance method. It returns two times the width plus two times the height. If I take a look at this one, this method called intersection, this is called a class method. And we'll talk about that in a minute or two. So if again, if I come back into here, let's say I wanted to find the area of say R1, I can do R1.area. So this is going to invoke the area method using R1 as the implied object. Okay, so if it's going to pop in here, I can imagine this area method running using the width for R1 and the height for R1. And then it's going to return the area and put it to the screen. Likewise, I could do, there's another instance method. It's an instance method because I need to invoke it using a specific instance of the class. Okay, I'm going to pause this video here and then I'm going to continue to talk about some other features of this class.